So this case study today is going to be really unique because this was a healthy 40-year-old male who decided to go ahead and do um, a week of fasting. And we wanted to see what the impact on the body would be during a period of fasting because um, a lot of times you'll see your voice report shift in different ways. That doesn't necessarily mean that something is getting worse. That can also mean that when you're going through a healing process or a healing cycle, there are certain areas of the body that just need extra support. And the areas that need extra support can differ from individual to individual. Certain people have their kidneys as a weak point. Other people have liver as a weak point. Other people might have circulation or heart as a weak point. So it's, um, it's really interesting to see how those weak or alert points need a little extra support when the body's moving through a healing cycle. And this is giving you a snapshot, right? This is taking your voice, moving it through about 1,100 biometric data points, and giving you back a snapshot of what's going on in your body currently and what's needing support. So this is just to reiterate that it's not always, oh my God, I need to worry. It's, oh, okay, this is showing me where my body is needing support, right? We can't put our attention on all of the moving parts in the body at once every moment of every day. So this tool you know, was created for that purpose to allow anyone and everyone to kind of see what needs immediate support. And as always, right, we have the summary of results and we have dynamic pieces. This means that these are pieces, anything that's highlighted is dynamic, which means that it's interchangeable. It, it changes out depending on what is the priority or what are the results really showing us. So that may look different on your report on the areas that are highlighted. So on bullet number one, you have the pillars of health, but there's actually five different pillars. So you could see a lot of different you know, possibilities there other than hydration and other than kidneys. Uh, and then we list out the two uh, systems. We actually measure 10 currently, uh, but we list out the two most needed supported systems. And we list out also three aspects that connect to that system along with whether or not it's physical or emotional, or you know, because we've, you know, we've, we've, we've experienced a lot of different diagnostic testing and we, we all always know that one of the biggest components that is one of the biggest blind spots for people is where's the emotional side to how things affect the body. We know that it affects the body. There are bukus of right. research articles, you know, um, one that I've shared before is they made a, a pencil eraser, very small, puncture hole on the skin of college students. And they had them do exams that week. And they healed 40% slower based off of stress just from an exam in school. Mm -hmm. So just imagine your life as you build it. And that's young people. Right. That's young people that are supposed to be healing pretty good that even in their peak, in their prime of 18, 19, 20, that they are having trouble healing just on something like taking a, an exam in college. So just imagine the amount of stress that we move through. So that's why we have uh, so much focus on not just the physical, but the emotional aspects of things. The other thing that also we found extremely important, which is on every summary, is the pH environment, which is bullet number four. And it kind of also gives you also three aspects and physical, emotional. But sometimes on reports, you might find the pH environment comes up twice. It might come up for bullet two and three along with four. So if it comes up twice, that just means you really should pay attention to your pH environment, which means that you need to be more alkaline, right? More veggies, more water, more breathing. Right. Things less that are going to less stress, <laughs> things that are going to alkalinize the body. And all these things are giving you hints towards what's going on. Right. So even now on this fasting, right, for this patient, you can see digestion and hydration is the things that need very big support. And it's having an effect on the joints, spine and muscle movement, which makes total sense. And this is all correlated to the kidneys, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, in traditional Chinese medicine, they believe that the essence of the kidneys is actually what helps transform bone marrow, which then spreads up the spine and throughout the body. And so you see kidneys come up. You also see joints, the spine, and muscle movement come up. 
And then the other thing the kidneys do is it controls your body fluids. It controls the water and things that need to go above the diaphragm for tissues and muscles and all that stuff. And then it controls the waste fluids below that on the lower half of the body. And so the see- fact that pH control and body fluids came up in relationship to the pH environment, all of this stuff is connected and related. And you know that's one of the functions of the kidneys. The kidneys literally get a signal to produce a hormone out of the kidneys to go into the bone marrow in order to create new red blood cells. So it it really is, I mean, there's such a strong connection. And again, that's why we like doing these weekly to be able to educate you guys on how to look at your report um, so that you can kind of go down that rabbit hole. As always, it's zero to 100%. You'll see different scores all across the report. And uh, 50% is you're doing okay. Yeah. Everything, so anything below 50% is stuff we want to look at supporting first. Yeah. And, or if there are patterns of things coming up multiple times, which we will go over. And then, as we mentioned, we are looking at both emotional and physical factors, and we break it down into different types of emotional influences and physical influences. And, and then part of the reason why we break up the emotional factors more importantly is to allow you to self-reflect on it, right? You live in your body 24 seven. Yeah. Now you can give us an answer of why it might be an emotional aspect or why it n- might not be, but you know we we've talked about it in in many different ways before. But if there is uh, an emotion that's connected to an organ and you don't think that you identify with it, that's probably the one that you identify with actually the most. Mm-hmm. That your body actually needs the most support in that you don't want to see uh, in one aspect or another. Uh, so it, it, we all get these hints with how we act and how we maneuver. Um, and, and how we look at things. And so anything uh, you know that you look at, if you want to look at the emotional aspect of kidneys, which is fear, mm-hmm. and you would say, oh, well, I'm not afraid of anything, then there's probably definitely something there. But on the flip side of that, kidneys also represent power, willpower, ambition, and purpose. So if you feel like you're lacking willpower, ambition, and purpose, then that would be the flip side of the fear response that's often found in the kidneys. And when we say emotional factors, we don't just mean you're having an emotional reaction to something. It could also mean intellectual, which is your thought process. Do you have repetitive thoughts that are negative that happen over and over again? Behavioral is your daily habits. What habits have you built for yourself that may be influencing your body in ways you don't want it to? And then spiritual, we all look to feel like we're part of something greater than ourselves. And that's really important for our overall well-being. So then we also like to look at acute and chronic because we just want to identify if something is more recent, which is more acute, or if it's more long-term and ongoing. The longer you've been on planet Earth, the more chronic we expect to see. So then these are going to be your pillars. And we're looking at the, these main five categories because these things influence everything in the body all at once. And as you notice in this individual, kidneys came up twice, both for hydration and for oxygen. And that's really important because even though your lungs take in oxygen, it's actually your kidneys that help distribute that oxygen throughout your body. So let's just repeat that again. So even though you might be breathing deep, it doesn't mean the oxygen is going deep. Right. The kidneys is what takes that oxygen and then moves it into the body and processes it in a way that oxygenates the organs and the systems. So we like to give you immediate action steps to support whichever pillar uh, comes up as needing the most help. So first one for this one is drink plain hot water. Um, And this is because it's going to help flush everything out. We talk about hot water, I think, every time we're we're on here because it really is one of the easiest, most effective remedies for multiple systems in the body. Yeah. And then the other thing that we did is we also, we build a lot of resources. Now we're going to get to some of the resources, but the one that we love to always talk about is the glossary of terms. This is a document that we built that literally walks through and, and for those of you that just did your, you know, report this month and, you know, walk through it again on this new level of whatever the newest results show uh, to learn more about not only the organ and how it impacts your body, but what you can actually do about it. So we made a recommendations that you can literally look up for every organ that comes up here under each pillar. 
So just because kidneys come up twice doesn't mean it's the same recommendations because it's under a different pillar. Right. One is for oxygenation and one is for hydration. So in order to get to that, we go to the last page. And obviously the only way that you can get to it, really the document is going to be um, you know, on your computer. So you're going to click here for the full list of health resources. It's going to take you to an Excel spreadsheet and it's literally the first item, glossary of terms for pillars of health with the voice rise report. You're going to left click it and then left click again, and it's going to open up the glossary. And you can see that it's already kind of, they have page numbers and all the different possible organs that could be underneath a pillar. So if we wanted to just go to kidneys and oxygenation first, we can go there and it says, okay, this is what's going on. This is what it's doing. This is what we recommend, some Tai Chi, right? Tai Chi is great for the joints, for the body, uh, for oxygenation, for deep breathing, for stress. Uh, Jin Shin, if you've never had Jin Shin done, I highly recommend that you try it out at least once in your life because it's uh, quite a potent experience um, that's really amazing overall for the entire body. And you can do it on yourself or you can have a practitioner do it for you. Yeah. And you can just search self Jinshin if you want to learn more about that. So then, right, we had hydration and kidneys. Am I missing it? No. Yep. <laughs> I'm missing it. Again, it's all about fluid balance. So now we're talking about different foods to eat and herbal teas to consider and what kinds of things you should limit to make sure that you're maintaining that optimal fluid balance. So again, these recommendations get really specific for whatever comes up for you. Now, sometimes the recommendations, they do overlap in some degrees. If they overlap, you really should do that <laughs> single recommendation. So if there's a if you see multiple organs and you're looking it up and, and there's a, a, the same recommendation, like let's just say you see Tai Chi twice, right? If we saw Tai Chi here. Or a certain food twice or a certain breathing exercise twice. Then you definitely want to pay attention to that do. and do that. Yeah. All right. But we've also embedded resources also into the report in other ways. So then this next page looks at overall systems and we measured 10 different systems throughout the body and we're gonna list the ones that need the most support first. And it's all gonna go in order. Um, the one that came up first for this individual was musculoskeletal, which again, remember the kidneys are involved in that musculoskeletal development process because of the bone marrow and the red bone cells. And it also moves and travels up the spine so all of this ties in together. And if we want to support the musculoskeletal system, all we have to do is click on the learning resource and it'll take you to a video with explanations and recommendations. So this is actually, uh, you know, these resources are based off of the giant list that we have now kind of created. We've created about 90 plus and we're creating extra ones every day. But what we wanted to do is give you a way to kind of determine what to what to look at, right? Because it's a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. So this goes and points you in the direction of the exact resource that we would highly recommend based off of the results showing up. And then the same is the case for the next system, which is digestive. And obviously with someone fasting, you would want to see, you'd probably see digestive system come up considering they're not getting a whole lot. This person was, you know, obviously drinking water, um, uh, clearly not enough because the kidneys came up. Uh, but, um, uh, and hydration obviously was the main pillar that needed more support. Yeah. So the, you know, water was one. And then the other thing that they were doing was, uh, Beeler's broth. Uh, so that was the kind of two aspects that they were doing, uh, during, during their fast and the fast would, they wouldn't eat up until about seven or eight o'clock at night. And then they would have about a quart, give or take of, uh, Beeler's broth, obviously plenty of water throughout the day. And then, you know, rinse and repeat it. for seven days. So it makes sense that the digestive system is working through some things, which is why it came up second. And then we also like to identify a most impactful factor. This means we're looking, we're asking ourselves through the report, is there a particular organ that if we support that organ, it'll have a positive impact on multiple systems at the same time? For this individual, it was heart impacting circulation and respiration. And again, if this is the place you want to start, 
we also include a learning resource to get started on this one too. Now, the other interesting kind of pattern to this is that if you noticed in the pillars for this report, you also had chest for the emotion. And then kidneys has a driving direct factor to heart. So it's kind of all kind of moving into place. And so it's really interesting because you know, when you're doing a fast, you know, you're not just looking at the physical aspects, you're also looking at the emotional aspects, right? Things, because a lot of people, if you look at how fasting was used, you know, historically was really to get clarity. And uh, the next page is just, if you kind of want to nerd out, um, these are all the other systems that were measured in priority order of needing support to not needing support. And it's left to right. So this is the lymphatic system is the, the third. third, hormone is the fourth, immune is the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and then obviously, so skin and hair is the 10th. Yeah. And then on the very last page, we break it down by organ. Um, because we want to give you an idea if, if you have something in particular that you're really focused on and you want a better idea of where it's at, this is a really good page to put side by side, especially if you're getting monthly, monthly reports from us. You can put this page next to each other, next to your previous one, and compare from month to month and see how things are shifting. The other thing that's always interesting to do is count how many of these on your last page are either physical or emotional. So that you know if your um, your overall health is being more impacted on a physical sense or on an emotional sense, and to give you an even further indication of that, you'll notice that some of these say significant or strong as a qualifier before emotional and physical. Significant means hey, pay attention. Strong means really, 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 really pay attention. And to give further context, cranium here is chronic and forty eight percent. It says significant emotional, right? As you know, we we take a physical score and an emotional score, but on this last page, we take a total health score, right? We combine them all. And so um, when it says significant emotional, that means that even though the total health score was 48%, most likely if it's significant emotional, it's probably about 10 points below that. So that means the emotional score of the cranium was probably 35, 33, 38%. Right. So that just shows how much more significant it is, which tells me, yeah, oh, man, there's some, you know, emotional things and aspects going on there within the cranium that are affecting things. Um, you know, kidneys, strong physical to give again for the perspective, you're probably looking at like 15, 20 points. So that means you're probably looking at like kidneys on a physical side being at like five or 10 percent instead of this total health score of 25. So that means the, the emotional side was probably, you know, a lot stronger, uh, obviously, than, um, than the physical side. And, you know, we just wanted to connect some different dots. You know, we talked about kidneys producing the blood in the, um, within the bone marrow and affecting essentially things like the brain and the cranium, uh, but also eyes because it can affect blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of connections. If you're feeling dizzy, uh, light, you know, lightheartedness, all that stuff that can be kidney problems. If you're having lower back pain, that can be an early indication of, of kidney, problems. kidney problems starting to develop, uh, even fatigue, because it's so tied to the adrenals because your adrenal glands sit right on top of your kidneys. So then even looking at the, if your kidneys come up as needing a lot of support, check out the adrenal score, see if that's also one of your lower ones. If it is, and there's some fatigue involved, great. Let's strengthen the kidneys first. Yeah. Same thing with kidneys and liver. Kidneys and liver are, uh, are functionally so closely related on helping each other out. Yeah. Imagine them as really siblings. And a lot of times what happens is if the liver gets overloaded, it starts to push some of those toxicities into the kidneys, hoping the kidneys will help with the filtration process. But the kidneys aren't really designed to handle anything except for water-soluble toxins, because that's where all, all your fluid moves through. So if the liver is pushing off fat soluble toxins, it's really hard for the kidneys to accommodate that. And so it's much easier to develop things like congestion and kidney stones. Kidney stones, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that's just a brief overview of um for uh for the voice voice report and all the different aspects that 
you know, you can see within this report. And again, you know, we do this every week. We take a different report, different symptoms, different age, um, and just kind of like walk through different aspects and patterns that you guys can uh, start to see in your own report. We probably have, I don't know, 10 of these um, case studies. And so, you know, there's a lot of different patterns to see because there's a lot of good data.